Hey guys, what's going on? It's Pop This Presents. I'm here in LA with Judah and the Lion. What's going on, guys? Yo, yo. Yo, good to be here. We're sharing mics. We're backstage at No Vacancy um, before the show. So how are you guys enjoying LA? What have you guys have been up to this trip? It's been great. We've been busy. Um, the last last couple of days, we, we um, it's kind of a quick, quick hitter in and out, um, a couple day trip. Um, but we're really excited to be kind of promoting this new record of ours and uh, it's been busy, but it's been really fun. The weather's amazing. Yeah, right. So you're you based in Nashville, like Tennessee. So you're kind of got icy, cold weather usually this time of year. Yeah, yeah at, it actually was it was pretty warm before we left, but then it got cold immediately when we got here. So we were happy about that. We escaped. I love that. I love that. Like got to extend the warm yeah, weather. Yeah, sucks for you guys over the, still over there in Tennessee. Yeah. Now the album's coming out in May, right? So you got a lot of prep. It's called the process, and this one's a little heavier um than than previous records it's it's got some weight to it um so uh we're we're trying to keep it upbeat here but i mean tell me about the <laughs> tell me about like the uh the background on this and how you guys uh the kind of the the theme of this record i guess yeah so it's, it's a lot about heartbreak so it's a little bit of a bummer but um I, I feel like with all of our music it has a definitely has a hopeful twist um but we decided to write a few songs per the stages of um grief and we chose the five stages the the kubler ross stages of grief, which is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then um, hopefully getting to acceptance. Um, so we, we're really excited about the way that it turned out and feel like it could be really healing for for people that are maybe going through similar situations. I mean, as as you know, like as in this human experience, we're all kind of dealing with unprocessed grief um, one way or the other. And I know for me in the last few years, it was a lot of unfolding and digging into to myself and, and trying to figure out, um, the places of me that, you know, that I hadn't necessarily, um, looked at and, and faced and, and this record definitely helped the two of us kind of do that. When you're making an album like this, that has, um, meaning behind it, it's not just a bunch of songs. Um, are you able to kind of separate when you're making, are you able to separate the music from the emotion that comes along with the music? I mean, when you're tracking vocals, you can kind of be like, I'm tracking vocals. I'm at work today and not worry about the, the you know what I'm saying? Well, is it, it's is it funny. hard to separate that? Well, I think it's, it, it is hard, especially when you're writing stuff about specific situations that are honest and um, maybe revealing. Um, like when we would when we would work on the anger section or the songs, I would kind of feel go back in those moments where I was like really feeling that anger. And of right. course, you know, in, in the moments we were recording, I wasn't necessarily in that season like I was, you know, a couple of years back. Um, of what we kind of wrote it about, but, um, I would find myself being angry, you know, at, after the studio session, just like, you're just so revved up and you're bringing back all these kind of emotions and feelings. But a part of that, um, again, was a very healing too, cause you're able to kind of look at it for what it is. Yeah. Now we're sitting here. There's two of you left. You're a duo now. Um, <laughs> two of you left. I there's two that. of you left. Don't leave me, Brian. There's two of you left. Um, so, yeah, Brian, how has it been being the 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 counter? You you are the the one other official band member now. What's it like been being the the other guy now? Yeah, that that's been like uh amazing change in many ways and actually to round that story out, our banjo player filled in for me last tour cuz I had a baby. Uh so he came back and did that tour so with us. So everyone's on good terms. Yeah, we're definitely on good terms. Um and uh, we love Nate. But yeah, we this was our second record, just the two of us um, writing and recording in the studio. So uh, we feel like we've gotten into a groove with that. Um, and that flow is totally different than what it was with the three of us. Um, but we feel like the process really represents that that studio flow well. Now, since there's two of you, is it is the writing process, the recording process more streamlined because there's just less people? We, it's different per record. This record, we did it at home studios in Nashville. So that's totally different than the previous, which was in a big studio um, with the full band and like kind of did it all at one time in two weeks. Um, so this, we really got into the story, like t having discussion on lyrics and going back and forth and um, honing in the songs like little by little to fill in what the theme was, I think was part of it. Yeah. So you come out in May, are you doing a bunch of shows this spring and summer? Like, is that how you're staying busy or what do you got planned for the summer? Festivals, I'm assuming? Um, well, I'm actually getting married this summer. So oh, 
Oh, life changes. Nothing like coming out with a divorce record and then getting married a month later. So yeah. Um, Shout out you like to some, those. like those movie stars from the '40s that just got married like six times or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not, bro. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see like that that part in your Wikipedia page. Is like <laughs> hey, don't put that no, evil the, on no, me. No, right. no, this this one's forever. This no, one's forever. Uh, we we're really excited. Um, we have 26 shows coming up um, starting in April. We kind of finish um, June 1st and then uh, a month off um, for like the wedding and kind of um, being married and honeymoon and all that stuff and then um you know the record actually comes out like you said may 10th so we'll be kind of like in the middle of the promo stuff while we're on the road which is exciting um and then we'll follow it up with a a fall headlining tour which we're really excited about is nashville the best place for you guys or is it just because that's where you're comfortable is what's the music scene like in nashville compared to what it was you know three or four years ago like right after covid hit I mean, I, I love, I love Nashville. Um, it's definitely, I'm, I'm a Tennessee boy, yeah. um, nature. And now we're kind of, I'm setting our roots there. I, the, the one thing that people don't think about necessarily with Nashville is a lot of musicians migrate because it's so central in the country. Sure. So, you know, sure. you can kind of bus out or go back home e- easier than even LA or New York. Um, you know, cause it's so coastal, but, um, yeah, we love Nashville. I mean, the, the music industry I feel like is is obviously flourishing there um, in a lot of different ways. I, I think um, we're proud that it's it's becoming way more than just like what's happening in country music. There's, oh yeah, there's a lot more kind of genres and cool art, artistic. I feel like I get a lot of uh, e- emails and and outreach from kind of singer songwriter type musicians. You know, more like the acoustic, not country, but you know, the singer songwriter type type of musician. Oh yeah, just like the. I mean, I feel like in just like the last few, um, it definitely feels like there's this kind of new surgence of songwriters that are winning in Nashville. And, and that's really cool. How do you feel? I mean, you're not a country band. You have country flavor to some of your songs, but I feel like country has been so blurred the last few years between Zach Bryan and now like this Beyonce country song and all this kind of stuff. Um, do you feel tempted to kind of actually like pursue country radio? We, uh, it's kind of funny. We, we're a band that has kind of always loved evolving and allowing ourselves like in in certain seasons to kind of change and become versus like, um, feeling like stagnant in our sound or, um, adding hip hop or adding like rock sounds and, yeah. and stuff. Um, and I think as we age, um, we've talked about potentially like, I think in this season that could feel authentic to us. Um, and following that, when that comes, I, I feel like will be really cool. Um, but not as of like right now, we're yeah. really excited about the, yeah, definitely would be down for like a country collaboration though, too. Like I love when country artists just collab with whoever the heck they want. Yeah. Well, that'd be cool if you just had did a song where it was like Jude and line was the band and you had someone sing along with the cool. band. That'd yeah. be, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. Now, Judah, you're, you're, you're an ex baseball player. Um, how much do you pay attention to baseball now? Are you a fan or do you just like... I'm a big fan. I, so to shout out one of my friends I played with, he actually got a um, ring here for the Dodgers. Um, his name is Matt Beatty. So I, I've kind of lived vicariously through him and um, his success, just like a lot of us Belmont guys um, did. But I, I like, honestly, I'm a little bit of a passive fan, um, regret, regrettably so. Um, I kind of follow the Braves and well, follow Well, Nashville's follow like a Beatty. AAA city in terms of... Although I feel like maybe they could get an expansion team. I mean, they're going to expand to 32 at some point. Yeah, it, yeah. it seems it seems like it could be in the future. Um, still up in the air whether I believe it's a five-sport you know, city or not. Uh, <laughs> but Nashville is growing, and it could be cool. I mean, obviously, we would love to see it. But I, I will say I love going to the Sounds game. Yeah. Because those AAA games, there's no pressure. You can get your beer and just That was out. my first journalism job was I was a uh, reporter for the AAA affiliate of the uh, Blue Jays. Oh, sweet. which was the Sy- Syracuse Chiefs okay. at the time. Um, I think they're the Mets AAA affiliate now. But yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm a baseball guy, so I had to ask. I also had to ask about this outfit here. These these overalls, these dicky overalls are 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 really working. Are you a big? Do you have a big collection of overalls? Or I started wearing overalls again like a few years back, and you know they're the outfit. They're they're comfortable. They're pretty practical. It looks good on stage. It looks fun on stage, and I'm a little bit of a redneck, 
And so I, I feel like I'm honoring my roots a little bit, but with the, you know, the Doc You kind of look like a redneck who also plays in a new wave band is what you kind of... <laughs> That's pretty much what I am. Kind of got the, the vibe yeah, yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, what have, what have, outside of the band, you know, I, I feel like the, uh, the, the non-main guy doesn't get enough love in interviews. Um, what's your life like outside of, outside of the band and obviously your, uh, your new, your growing family? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, had a kid, which is amazing. It's been an amazing journey. Uncle Judah's met him yeah. a good bit, and um, yeah. But I love hiking and just kind of being in Nashville. Love cooking. I think the thing with us, like when we're off the road, we love to kind of nest at home and like be with our community and spend that time when we can. Um, so, yeah, nice, nice, nice. All right, guys, we'll, we'll wrap it up. I really appreciate your time, and I hope the show goes well tonight. And uh, congrats on the, the album. I know it's finished. What's that, what's that period like between the album being announced and it coming out? Is it nerve-wracking? Does it feel, do you feel antsy? Is it kind of like, come on, let's go? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think especially when um, the writing process sometimes, especially with this record, you know, it's over the course of a few years and have lived a lot of life. Um, sometimes like it feels like you're one year or two years ahead of like the record coming out. So it's yeah. like this, this record obviously diving into heartbreak and the pain of the divorce. That's a little bit nerve wracking that it's going to be public, you yeah, know, yeah. um, you With know, your new two bride. years, two yeah. years later. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I told Cena, I was like, I'm so sorry that I'm going to have to be talking about this for, for the next little bit. Yeah. But and no, if one it, of those songs hits maybe for the rest of your life, you know, and that, that's what you sign up for. And, and that's what, I mean, honestly, like, I, I feel like that that's what we try to we try to do is like we write about the seasons that we're in and when it comes out it comes out um in the moments that um it's supposed to and we're feeling like really um anxious so like in a good way we're, we're really excited for that for this to be this story to be in people's ears and also check out the uh the single it is what it is which is out now yeah got a shout out the new single of course yeah come on great yeah. decisions coming up next we're really excited about it all right guys thanks a lot thank you thanks for having me